Level 0 Before we dive into chaos and destruction, let's take a moment to appreciate the sun when it's well, behaving itself. Picture it, 93 million miles away, a gigantic nuclear furnace burning non-stop, yet on some days, it's surprisingly calm. No fiery tantrums, no angry bursts of radiation, just steady sunshine. Almost like a massive lion sprawled out in the grass, eyes half-closed, giving the impression it couldn't care less about the world around it. Astronomers call this period solar minimum. It's when sunspots, those dark magnetic scars that often trigger flares, practically vanish. The sun's surface looks smooth, almost serene, like a giant glowing billiard ball. During these times, Earth's technology breathes a sigh of relief. Satellites orbit without worry, power grids stay unbothered, and astronauts enjoy a cosmic coffee break without checking for solar storm alerts. But here's the twist. This calm isn't permanent. It's part of the sun's natural 11-year cycle. Just when you think the big star has chilled out for good, it suddenly decides to wake up and throw a fiery fit. And when it does, the consequences scale dramatically. So at level zero, we're safe. The sun is calm, Earth is stable, and your phone's GPS works flawlessly. But this piece is deceptive, because hidden beneath that bright golden surface are tangled magnetic fields twisting tighter every day. And when those snap well, let's just say level one is about to turn the volume up. Level one. So the sun finally stirs. But instead of unleashing a cosmic firestorm, it lets out a hiccup. That's basically what an A-class flare is, the weakest, most harmless type of solar flare. If the sun were flexing its muscles, this would barely register as a twitch. These A-class flares are so tiny that, without advanced instruments, we wouldn't even know they happened. Telescopes designed to watch the sun can detect them. But down here on Earth, life goes on exactly the same. Your Wi-Fi doesn't glitch, your GPS doesn't spin you in circles, and astronauts don't rush to hide in shielded compartments. Honestly, these flares are more like warm-up stretches, the sun loosening up before it really gets moving. Now here's the fun part. Even though they're minuscule compared to the monsters we'll see later, A-class flares still involve mind-boggling amounts of energy. Imagine millions of nuclear bombs going off at once, and that's what we call barely noticeable in solar terms. Kind of humbling, right? Scientists pay attention to these baby flares because they're like whispers of what's coming. They give clues about the sun's magnetic field, those twisted, invisible lines of force that can suddenly snap and fling energy across space. Think of them as the sun clearing its throat before it starts shouting. So, what does an A-class flare mean for us? Practically nothing, for now. But don't get too comfortable. Because just one step up, the B-class flare, is where things start poking at our technology. Still minor, but noticeable. Level 1 may feel harmless, almost cute, but it sets the stage for the escalating drama ahead. And as we climb the ladder, the sun's hiccups turn into roars you definitely don't want aimed at Earth. Level 2. Now the sun is done stretching, and it decides to test its voice. Enter the B-class flare, still small on the cosmic scale, but big enough to actually tug at Earth's technology. Think of it as the sun whispering, and yet that whisper is strong enough to rattle delicate systems orbiting above us. Unlike the almost invisible A-class flares, B-class flares can cause minor radio disturbances. If you're on Earth, you probably won't notice. Your TikTok feed won't freeze, and your favorite podcast won't suddenly cut to static. But if you're a satellite cruising hundreds of miles above us, you might feel the nudge. Signals get a little shaky, and instruments start picking up static from the sun's outburst. It's a reminder of just how ridiculously powerful our star is. Even its small talk involves releasing more energy than the largest human-made explosions ever could. Imagine being so overpowered that your gentle tap could still knock around billion-dollar satellites. That's B-class energy. And while these flares are not dramatic enough to make headlines, they're important because they show us how fragile the line is between no effect and major disruption. They're like nature's warning. If you think this is nothing, just wait. Scientists keep a close eye on these flares because they're stepping stones to the real troublemakers. B-class events reveal how solar activity slowly ramps up, building tension like a drumbeat before the drop. So, yes, B-class flares are small. They're not the disaster movies. They're not the apocalyptic scenarios. Yet. But they mark the first time the sun's temper starts brushing against our world. And from here on out, the story gets louder, brighter, and a whole lot more dangerous. Level 3. Now things are starting to get noticeable. Welcome to the world of the C-class flare, the middleweight fighter of solar activity. Still nowhere near catastrophic, but finally strong enough that Earth begins to feel the shake. C-class flares can cause noticeable interference with satellites. Think GPS glitches, communication signals acting up, and satellites having to work overtime to filter out the sun's noisy static. For the average person, it might feel like your Maps app telling you to drive into a lake, or your live stream freezing at the exact moment your team scores. Annoying? Definitely. World-ending? Not yet. The thing about C-class flares is that they're common, really common. 
During an active solar cycle, they pop off almost daily, like background fireworks you barely pay attention to. But every one of them carries the same reminder. The sun is restless and it's flexing just a little harder each time. A great example happened in 2011, when a series of C-class flares disrupted some satellite signals and caused minor hiccups in communication systems. Nothing devastating, but it was enough to make engineers sweat and remind the world that space weather is not just a sci-fi concept. It's real, and it can hit us anytime. And here's where the stakes quietly rise. Satellites run almost everything in modern life. Banking systems, internet, TV, navigation, even global defense networks. So when a moderate flare starts rattling them, it's like hearing the creak of a door before a storm blows it wide open. C-class flares may not dominate the headlines, but they are the gateway to the sun's more violent moods. And once we step past this level, the interruptions stop being inconvenient and start becoming serious. Level 4. Now the sun is no longer just poking at us, it's starting to shout. M-class flares are the first true heavy hitters, and at this stage the consequences are impossible to ignore. These bursts of energy can cause polar radio blackouts, meaning that in the high latitudes of Earth, communication simply drops out. Pilots flying over the poles suddenly find themselves unable to talk to air traffic control, and emergency rerouting becomes the only safe option. This isn't science fiction, it's happened. Back in December 2006, a powerful McClass flare disrupted high-frequency radio signals across the polar regions, forcing airlines to divert flights. That might sound like a minor inconvenience, but each reroute costs airlines tens of thousands of dollars, not to mention the chaos for scheduling and passengers. M-class flares also bring something else. Radiation storms. Astronauts on the International Space Station have to be especially cautious. While Earth's magnetic field shields most of us on the ground, astronauts rely on specialized shielding, and M-class flares are strong enough to make them retreat to safer parts of the station until the danger passes. And let's not forget satellites. At this stage, GPS accuracy starts to wobble, radio fades in and out, and military systems designed to rely on precise signals suddenly face blind spots. It's like the sun reminding us, oh, you thought your technology was invincible? Think again, M-class flares are the tipping point. We've gone from minor annoyances to genuine global disruptions. But the sun is just warming up, because the next level, the higher end of M-class, pushes us closer to the kind of chaos that starts making headlines. Level 5. At this level, the sun stops playing around. M6 to M9 flares are what scientists call major events, and they're powerful enough to cause widespread communication problems across the globe. This isn't just pilots losing signal over the poles anymore. We're talking about entire regions experiencing blackouts in radio, GPS, and even satellite communications. One infamous example struck in March 1989. A series of strong flares and solar storms disrupted communication so badly that Canadian operators struggled to keep their systems online. It was a precursor to an even bigger disaster that same year. But even at the M-class stage, the warning signs were clear. For everyday life, this means interruptions ripple across industries we take for granted. Ships lose navigation accuracy in the middle of the ocean, emergency services face radio dropouts, and airlines spend millions rerouting flights. Suddenly, the invisible infrastructure that keeps the world connected feels fragile. But it's not just about communication. M-class flares at the upper end can trigger solar radiation storms, intense enough to damage satellites outright. Imagine billion-dollar machines in orbit suddenly glitching or shutting down because the sun decided to throw a fit. Astronauts on spacewalks would be in serious danger, with radiation levels spiking well above safe limits. This is the stage where the world starts paying attention. News outlets pick up the story, space weather centers issue alerts, and governments prepare contingency plans. Because once M-class storms start reaching this strength, the next step, X-class flares, is where things turn from disruptive to outright dangerous. The sun has moved from whispers to shouts and the echoes are already rattling through our technology. But the roar that's coming next? That's when history remembers. Level 6. Now we've entered the X-class category, the heavyweight division of solar flares. These are the blasts that make scientists sit up straight and the media finally throw around words like massive and extreme. An X1 to X5 flare is powerful enough to disable satellites outright, fry electronics in orbit, and put astronauts in serious danger. At this stage, the sun is releasing energy equivalent to billions of nuclear bombs detonating at once. The radiation floods into near-Earth space, overwhelming satellite circuits and scrambling systems we depend on every single day. GPS, television, banking transactions, even parts of the internet. Imagine entire constellations of satellites blinking out like candles in a storm. And astronauts? They're suddenly on the front line, 
During a strong X-class flare, radiation doses in orbit can spike high enough to cause severe health risks within hours. That's why space agencies track solar activity obsessively. Because for crews on the International Space Station, the warning can mean the difference between safety and a dangerous exposure. We've seen this power before. In October 2003, the infamous Halloween solar storms unleashed multiple X-class flares, including one estimated as high as X-45. Satellites failed, airlines rerouted dozens of flights, and auroras danced far south into Texas. It was a reminder that even in the 21st century, the sun can still bring modern technology to its knees. X-class flares in this range are rare, but not mythical. They happen every solar cycle, and when they do, the disruptions echo worldwide. But as destructive as they are, this is still just the beginning of what the sun is capable of. Because above X5, we cross into territory where entire power grids tremble, and society itself feels the strain. Level 7. Now we've crossed into the territory where the sun doesn't just disrupt technology, it threatens to cripple entire power grids. X10 and above flares are the kind of blasts that make governments worry because they can trigger massive geomagnetic storms on Earth. Here's what happens. When one of these monster flares erupts, it often comes paired with a coronal mass ejection, a gigantic bubble of charged particles hurled into space. If Earth happens to be in the way, those particles slam into our magnetic field and dump colossal amounts of energy into the planet's atmosphere. The result? Power lines overload, transformers fry, and grids collapse like dominoes. We've seen glimpses of this danger before. In March 1989, a geomagnetic storm linked to powerful solar activity plunged the entire Canadian province of Quebec into darkness for nine hours. Millions of people sat in a blackout, factories stopped, schools closed, and the economy took a massive hit, all thanks to the sun. And that wasn't even the strongest flare possible. With X10 plus events, the chaos scales up. Imagine entire countries losing electricity for days, even weeks. Hospitals scrambling for backup power, global stock markets thrown into panic, communication satellites disabled, and flights grounded across continents. In our hyper-connected world, the ripple effect could be staggering. Scientists warn that the modern electrical grid is far more vulnerable today than in 1989. More devices, more dependency, more risk. And an X10 plus flare wouldn't just cause flickering lights, it could spark a full-blown technological crisis. And yet, unbelievably, the sun has fired off even larger bursts in the past. Which raises the terrifying question, what happens if we face another Carrington-level event? Level 8. Now we arrive at the benchmark, the Carrington event of 1859, the most powerful solar storm in recorded history. If earlier levels were warnings, this was the sun showing us what it can truly do. It began when astronomer Richard Carrington noticed an enormous flash on the sun's surface. Within hours, Earth was hit by a geomagnetic storm, so intense that telegraph systems, the cutting-edge technology of the time, sparked, caught fire, and shocked operators. Messages were sent even after the batteries were disconnected, powered only by the storm itself. And that was in the 19th century, when society's reliance on electricity was almost non-existent. Fast forward to today, and the same event would be catastrophic. An X-40-class flare paired with a massive coronal mass ejection could knock out satellites, crash GPS networks, disable radio communication, and fry power grids across entire continent. Picture banking systems frozen, internet gone, airplanes grounded, and billions of people in the dark. Scientists estimate that if a Carrington-scale storm hit now, the economic damage could reach trillions of dollars, with recovery stretching into years. In 2012, we narrowly dodged a repeat, a solar eruption just as massive missed Earth by a matter of days. If our planet had been in its path, the modern world would have faced an unprecedented blackout. The Carrington event is more than a historical curiosity. It's a reminder that the sun is capable of disrupting civilization itself. And the terrifying part? Events of this scale are rare, but not impossible. They've happened before, which means they can, and likely will, happen again. But if you think that's the ceiling of solar fury, just wait until we step into the realm of super flares. Level 9. If the Carrington event was a thunderclap, a super flare would be a nuclear detonation on a planetary scale. Astronomers define these as solar eruptions up to a thousand times stronger than the largest flares ever recorded on the sun. Thankfully, we've never experienced one in human history, but stars similar to ours have, and the evidence is chilling. A super flare would release so much energy that Earth's magnetic shield could be overwhelmed in an instant. Satellites wouldn't just glitch, they'd be destroyed. Power grids wouldn't just trip, they'd collapse completely. Within minutes, every form of communication we depend on, GPS, internet, radio, television, even military networks, could vanish. 
Civilization would be forced back to a pre-electric age overnight, and then comes the radiation. A flare of this magnitude could strip away parts of Earth's atmosphere, bombarding the surface with harmful ultraviolet and particle radiation. Planes in the air would face immediate risks. Astronauts in orbit? Unprotected. Even people on the ground could be exposed to elevated radiation levels. Some scientists believe the sun might be too stable to unleash a super flare of that size, but others warn that while rare, it's not impossible. In 2012, when a Carrington-scale eruption narrowly missed us, researchers realized just how close we'd come. Now imagine that event multiplied by hundreds. The aftermath of a super flare would be apocalyptic in slow motion. Food supply chains collapsing without refrigeration, hospitals unable to run life-saving equipment, economies unraveling as digital infrastructure disappears. In short, a global technological reset. We hope super flares remain speculative, but history shows the sun always has surprises, and the ultimate one could dwarf everything we've seen before. But even beyond super flares lies the most terrifying, purely theoretical possibility, the star killer flare. Level 10. At the final level, we leave science fact behind and step into the realm of terrifying theory, the star killer flare. Imagine a solar eruption not thousands, but millions of times stronger than anything humanity has ever witnessed. A blast so powerful it wouldn't just disrupt civilization, it could erase it. A flare of this magnitude would unleash an unimaginable surge of radiation, enough to strip Earth's atmosphere away in hours. Without that protective shield, the sun's raw ultraviolet and particle radiation would bombard the surface directly. Crops would wither instantly, oceans would begin to heat and evaporate, and life as we know it would be burned from the planet. Scientists debate whether our sun could ever produce such an event. Some argue it's simply too stable, too small, compared to the more volatile stars observed spewing super flares across the galaxy. But even the slim possibility is haunting, because astrophysicists have recorded distant stars unleashing energy bursts that dwarf anything our sun has thrown at us. If it happened here, there would be no warning, no protection, no escape. It would be the ultimate extinction-level event. Not a slow collapse of systems, but a sudden, scorching reset of Earth itself. Civilization, history, and even the memory of humankind would vanish in a flash of solar fury. Now, the good news, this level remains theoretical, almost certainly beyond the sun's capacity. But the very idea is a reminder of just how fragile our planet is beneath the power of its star. From the harmless whispers of A-class flares to the nightmare vision of a star killer burst, one truth stands out. The sun gives us life, but it also holds the power to take it all away.